Okay, welcome to a new video where I'm going to go through lots of opening tips that will help you get a good position in the opening and it's all involving black neglecting the center and you controlling the center. So, let's get started. So, number one is the random h6 that opponents often play. So let's show you an example of this. So I'm going to play knight f3 after e4, e5. I'm looking at this opening because it's very, very common. And yet most opponents will play knight c6 to protect that pawn. And I'm going to play this system with knight c3, but there's alternatives. But I'm just showing you I'm developing this, um, my pieces, controlling the center. I want to show you what happens when black plays this kind of random move like h6. And the main antidote to this is to play a quick d4. Now, why do we play this? Well, my bishop can now come out, so I can develop my bishop. I'm attacking black center, so I'm attacking this pawn. So I'm forcing my opponent onto the defensive, and they have to find lots of accurate moves. So, for example, if black plays d6 here, there are many alternatives. You can see the computer likes bishop b5, but you can simply take on here, take on here, and you have an advantage because black can't castle. And you've also got the next move. So that's bad. You could also take with a knight. Same idea though. Takes, 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 takes. And you have this development advantage and black king can't castle. So generally the best move to play here for black is to take the pawn here, which I'm just going to do now. And what happens here is often black will think, ah, just trade pieces. If I trade pieces, that's absolutely fine. But you'll see here that white has a massive advantage. Why is this? Well, I've got one, two pieces developed. Black has no pieces developed. I'm controlling one, two, three squares in the center. And also my development is really easy. I can bring both my bishops out here. I can then castle either side. I have this really harmonious position. And you can already see here, um, white is already up 1.4. So I'm almost up a pawn and a half just by having this harmonious position. So if your opponent plays h6, play this strategy. Okay, and now look, let's look at something very similar. So let's look at a6. Again, it's a very similar idea. We want to play a d4 very, very quickly. And again, uh, d6 leads to the same problems we already saw by taking on here. Um, if black captures, captures, and then black captures again, we get an almost identical position to where h6 was. Again, we have this harmonious development. However, if black was to play one of the best moves here, which is this, we can play along these lines. So we take on here. Again, if black takes here, then we can stop black castling, which is great for us. If it's b takes c3, then bishop simply just comes to d3. And again, we do the same analysis. I'm controlling this square and this square. I've got one, two pieces developed. I'm ready to castle very, very quickly. And white has a really nice position. So a6 works in a very similar way to h6. Play d4 quickly and get your pieces out. And now we're going to look at something similar but slightly better for black. So when you play bishop e7. Now this still develops a piece. So it must be a better move than a6, h6. But it still neglects the center. And again, our d4 idea is the perfect antidote. So if we play uh, e takes d4, we take on here. And if it takes on here, takes on here, we have a great advantage. In fact, it's better in this case because this pawn is now undefended. So black, as you can see, has to play here, developing the same piece twice, which is bad. And after e5, it gets slightly complicated with queen e7, eight, uh, f4 but generally white has a really, really good position. As you can see by the engine here, we're almost two pawns up in after eight moves. So again, bishop e7, you can still approach it in the same way. You play this really quick d4, control that center. Okay, I'm gonna look at one more passive move that black can often play here, and that is d6 immediately. And again, there's a few alternatives, but d4 works in a great way. He takes there takes there, takes there, takes there. Notice this is the position we're always aiming for here, is that we've got this development in the center and we get a very nice position. Now, if you're wondering what kind of middle games you get here, I will go through an example line. So um, knight to f6, for example, um, you can play f3 as a few moves. And let's see if we play normal moves. So I'm just gonna develop my pieces. Black's gonna develop his or her pieces very normally. And what happens in these positions? I mean, just look at the engine analysis here. We're still a pawn and a half up. 
And the reason for that is our plan is really, really easy. So I play the best computer move here, which is c6. We're just going to play g4. We're just going to play h4, h5, g5, bring our bishop here. And essentially, all our pieces are homing in on the king. Now, as you can see here, black does have some chances here of b5. But his attack is generally too slow, and your attack is much faster. Okay, so you can aim for this kind of attack in pretty much every game that you play when your opponent plays suboptimally by playing these h6 moves, bishop e7 moves, d6 moves. It gives you this alternative. Okay, and then what happens when black plays well? So say he plays knight f6 and tries to copy some of your moves. Well, you can even still play d4 here because we have the advantages on the first move. The thing is, though, black now has counter-attacking chances. So the best move here for black is bishop b4. Uh, the reason is he can take on here and then take on there. But after this fairly forced line I'm going to show you, which is the main line of the Scotch four knights, so knight takes c6, b takes c6, bishop d3. Notice the plans are always the same here. Uh, black castles and we castle. And generally, d5 is the best move here. Other moves are weaker. But you'll see after this position, takes, takes. And the move I like to play here is h3, but there are alternatives. It's an equal position, but black's pawns are slightly weak. So even if black plays perfect moves, because essentially these are perfect moves, up to move 9, you still have ever so slightly better position or equal position. Okay, so you're not risking anything by playing like this, but you're allowing black to make mistakes, and this is how you win at chess. Okay, so those are my control the center opening tricks with e4, e5. Again, playing this very solid system allows black to go wrong, and you'd be amazed how often black does go wrong by playing one of these suboptimal moves. Your general plan is to play d4, exploit your lead in the development, you get to control the center, and from controlling the center, you get to control the game. Okay, if you like these kind of videos, please let me know. Please give me a thumbs up and give me a like, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, bye-bye for now.